Uh, today I would like to uh, discuss the issue of water control traveling. I hope to be able to uh, demonstrate that uh, water uh, food traveling uh, uh, intimately uh, related to uh, total domestic areas like the nearby video a crash course on uh, food traveling. Uh, food traveling is
reactive oxygen uh, species. So we got for the uh, we got for uh, reactive oxygen species in uh, the ripening fruit, and uh, we found many examples. I'm showing you only one example uh, during the ripening of the make of fruit. So this will be step at the various stages of ripening. Uh, this is the uh, evolution of ethylene that typically evolves during uh, tomato ripening, tomato fruit. And here is hydrogen oxide and uh, lipid hydroperoxides. However, there is a problem uh, with that because uh, oxidative metabolism uh, may put in jeopardy the transcription and the Trans, uh, excuse me, uh, translational activity, and uh, in addition to that, we, uh, may, we do not know what may be the cellular or metabolic uh, target of the hydroperoxides. However, we will come back to this topic uh, later on. So, the other possibility uh, to be considered was hydration stress. To uh, examine this hypothesis, we did a simple minor experiment. We argued that uh, if there is a hydration state, we should be able to uh, observe changes in the tissue water content. And so we went to the method of uh, azeotropic uh, distillation. Uh, one uh, immerses the fruit in uh, tapirin, one heats up the uh, solution, the mixture is boiled off, water is separated, and it is collected in a water trap side arm as shown here. And based on this method, we were able to observe the following. These are changes in, uh, in the water content of climacteric fruit. This are fruit that evolve ethylene. This is a fruit category that is also influenced by uh, ethylene. So, one can observe that in the case of uh, the ripening of crab, for example, uh, as the tissue moves from the stage of green, deep green to white, there is an increase in the water content and then as it moves from, from the stage of white to incipient red, there is a decrease in the water content and this is a phenomenon that occurs in any fruit that we have examined. In this case, we selected the fruit based on their background color, but in some fruit, for example, uh, peach or uh, various uh, varieties, it's not possible to categorize the ripening stage based on background color. So we did time-dependent measurement of ripening the fruits at uh, room temperature. And uh, lo and behold, we observed the same phenomenon. Is an increase in the water content, and then uh, there is uh, then uh, there is a decrease in the water content, as shown in these three examples. So phenomenon manifests itself in uh, non climactic fruit. Uh, for example, uh, this will be. This will be the service berry, uh, this will be the raspberry, uh, this will be the honey. Uh, that's an interesting story. I went to the computer, uh, tried to get an image of honey berry, and this is what I got. No matter how I spent it, honey berry kept coming up. So in desperation, I plugged in the uh, scientific name, I still got honey berry. <laughs> so I decided to leave Honeyberry. Uh, she looks
swipe and red heart. <laughs> and like, I think she belongs here. <laughs> In any case, back to back to my science. We see the same phenomenon manifesting itself in non-climacteric fruit as the fruit moves from the green to the white and then to the incipient thread there is an increase in the water cotton then a decrease in the water content shown by the arrows here in various uh, group of fruit so it appears to be a universal phenomenon and uh, I went to the lecture saying if perhaps other people have observed it then indeed they did, but in entirely different contexts. I'm showing you an example of a study came out of Nigeria. Uh, the author, I guess often, I cited him. Uh, in a uh, study, he and his colleagues ran a study on uh, church in constituents in white Nibrana. Potassium, sodium, amino acid, sugar, starch, as well as water. He presented it in uh, a table form. I pulled out the values and plotted them. And lo and behold, what one observes is that as the fruit approaches the stage of ripening, there is a decrease in the water content in both the pulp and the beer. And you can see that. Uh, as it begins to ripen, it uh, increases water content, and that shows this uh, shows the uh, corresponding change in starch. Starch begins to be degraded into sugar. And we found many examples like that, and so the universal, excuse me, the, uh, the phenomenon, phenomenon appears to be universal and apparently is valid. I also turned my attention to ethylene. I asked the question, uh, might ethylene actually be involved in, with water? And the answer to that used to be, uh, yes, we work with potato because potato tuber response to apply ethylene, for example, it will show an upsurge in respiratory activity. So, when one applies ethylene to the potato tuber, uh, one observes a decrease in the water content, and then an increase, it uh, simulates what we have seen in ripening fruit. Uh, this is the control by comparison to the did not receive uh, applied ethylene. Uh, there is a, some increase in water content because we carried out this experiment in highly saturated water, saturated atmosphere. I'm also showing this graph. Uh, I'm comparing not only the measurement of water, but also changes in the weight of the tuber. This is tuber that receive applied ethylene and you can see that there is a decrease in weight and then an increase in weight and then a decrease again and it corresponds to the measurements that we have from here and I'm reading this data in order to impress on you that there is an exchange of moisture between the living tissue and the ambient atmosphere. We come to this point again.
genetically engineered tomato. Uh, this tomato was uh, this tomato likes the better day to synthesize ethylene. It will ripen when presented with ethylene, but it cannot make ethylene in the form uh, it keeps in the green position. So we ask the question, what will happen to this tomato if we artificially induce water deficit? And we can do that by exposing the tomato to cold conditions for a while. And that will follow, that will be followed by bringing the tomato to conditions of room temperature, let's call it uh, cold stress acclimation. And that is accompanied by a decrease in water content, not unlike with what we have seen before. So let's see what it does to the ripening process. In a preliminary study, we compare the control, it stays green to tomatoes that it will not ripen, uh, to tomatoes that receive methylene. These tomatoes will ripen, these tomatoes will get on the cold stress and they show, uh, they show an expression of the ripening process. We did a more different study, uh, keeping the tomatoes under cold conditions in order to reduce water stress and then bring them back to uh, room temperature and observing the change in the rate of ripening and so this is the study that was carried out, uh, carried out, out over a period of 8 days and uh, please note that these are tomatoes that did not, did not receive cold treatment they stayed green uh, they lost some of their growth but they certainly uh, do not like that So, there is some evidence that the decline in water content and the onset of fruit ripening might have something to do with regulating the ripening process. The next question that we ask is how is this water deficit decline in the water content might be brought about? And in order to assess the, this possibility, we examine two major water compartments that are found in plantations. One of them is the central vacuum, and the other one is the upper class. The upper class is the is matter that is confined between two adjacent uh, cell membranes. And it contains many cell wall. So water is found mainly here and also here. And so let's see if what the what might be the role of the vacuum. I would like to draw your attention again to the changes in water content that Observes. For example, in our uh, ripening tomato, there is a slight change in the water content. Uh, this is the uh, change in the water content in ethylene treated uh, potato. There is one observes again slightly changes in water content. And so, in order for the uh, vacuum to impose these changes, it would mean that the vacuum will have to undergo changes in the osmotic pressure. It will draw water if the if it will draw water if the uh, if the osmotic pressure will increase, it will release water if the osmotic pressure will decrease, but for the osmotic pressure to decrease, it means that the vacuum has to expel solute to the environment. This is not a likely, this is not a likely process. 
So we turn to the server and ask the question, perhaps servers have some tricks of their script, perhaps they can instigate this cycle changes that we have observed. And in order to uh, in order to uh, ascertain that, in order to assess that we uh, rely on the measurement of thermal sweating. Uh, this is a study that was done by other authors, but it shows typically that as food tightening, as food as food tightening, cell walls begin to swell and this is an expression of cell wall interpretation. The structure becomes loose, it interacts with water, takes up water and so on. So we made a comparison between the efficacy of isolated cell walls to swell and the water content that we found in different ripening fruit. Here's the example of the tomato. So this would be the this would be the change in dish water content. This would be the change in the efficacy of the servo to swell. Uh, this is strawberry. This would be the change in uh, dish water content. This would be a change in the efficacy of the servo to swell. Here's an example from the potato. This will be a change in tissue water content as it does by ethylene, and this will be the change in the efficacy of cell walls to swell. Uh, do note the I cor correlation value as shown here and here. Here it is somewhat lower, I think, because of this difference of the pattern, pattern holds. So this high correlation values suggest that these two parameters are highly interrelated and suggest also that uh, perhaps, uh, uh, perhaps changes in cell metabolism just do something changes in the water content. So this is that I suggest for a moment. This is cell in a relaxed state. It will take up water molecules. Increases as the fruit ripens. Uh, 
some of them were uh, tentatively, tentatively identified. As shown here. So, let's go back to this model. Perhaps we can expand on the relevance and the importance of this phenomenon, not only in uh, plants, but perhaps also in animals. Beverly Rubik, in one of the previous one of the previous comments on what I indicated short data on water and human aging and she showed that that human aging is associated with decline in the body water content. Uh, it's information by that out from the literature. It shows that there is, yes, generally a decline, a decrease in total body, body water at around 17%. As one goes from age 20 to 65 to 80. But what is perhaps more important and interesting is that decline in extra cellular water represents 40%. 40% in decline in, uh, in total body water. So, I am showing you another rendition work that was done by Spain in Sweden. Decline in, decline in total body water here, decline in extracellular water here. This is shown in May. In few minutes, the phenomenon is even more pronounced. There is some decline in total uh, body water, but uh, most of it is declined in extra cellular water. I don't ask you to explain it So I'm bringing Beverly back into, into the picture. Declining extracellular water and aging is not restricted to plants and perhaps also can be expanded uh, to mammals, including us. Um, and from this perspective, you want to stay on for get about your vitamins and supplements. My proposal to you is simply. The aggregate. <coughs> so, aggregation, aggregation appears to be associated with the loss of water. The aggregation appears to be associated with uptake of water. And one that needs to ask the question now is how that related to frightening and where do we go next from there. I went back to literature and what I found
and it's just not only that, but, but uh, acetyl chromos is a victim of expansion, and that is associated with titration, and that will correspond to what we see in the Thank you. 